Hi, welcome to another video. So, I stumbled upon an AI model that is actually really good. Like, really good. And I thought I'd tell you guys about this as well, and how I'm using this new model combined with some other tools. This one is called UI Gen T3. Now, if you follow the AI scene, then you'd know that UI Gen T2 was actually just launched like some months back. And now here's the newer version. If we talk about this version, then this is a 14B model based on the Quen 314B model, which is the latest Quen model and quite good at coding as well, considering the size. Plus, it is also a hybrid reasoning model, meaning that you can configure it to think or not think as well. Now, what they have done is that they have taken that model and they have just fine-tuned it to create some awesome designs. This model is basically a UI designer model that can generate thoughtful designs. You can see all these designs that are basically generated with this model, which is something that the Quen models can't do. It can generate both components and full web pages. It can also quickly scaffold UIs from scratch with clean code, build buttons, cards, navbars, and export at scale, create admin panels, dashboards, and layout templates, as well as save time on mockups with production-ready HTML and Tailwind outputs. It is mainly fine-tuned for creating designs with HTML and Tailwind, which is fine, but I would have liked for it to be able to create components in React directly. But from what I have seen, it can actually build some great UIs in React as well, though the code can be sometimes finicky. But it is still awesome when you compare it to the designs that the smaller models can make. They are also planning to allow it to do Figma to code generation, which is also kind of cool when that happens. They both are trained with pre- and post-reasoning model architecture. It enables guided reasoning with layout analysis and heuristics, while NoThink doesn't allow for that, but is faster and does much more raw code generation. So, you can set it up locally with VLLM. It is not natively available on Alama, though you can use it via the Hugging Face integration in Alama. There's also another model that is a 4B model called UI Gen T 34B, which is based on the Quen 34B model and is also good performing for the size, and you can use that as well. And it will work even on 8 gigs of RAM as well, which will also be great. If you do wish to use the model for free, then you can deploy the model on Colab or Lightning AI quite easily with the API endpoint you get through there. It can be easily deployed both on cloud as well as locally with only about 16 gigs of RAM which is really good, or the smaller one doesn't even need that. Now, let me show you how you should set it up with RuCode, KiloCode, and Klein as well. But before we do that, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Dart. Dart is the only truly AI-native project management tool that you'll ever need. You can use it to manage your tasks for a project, create multiple boards, organize them, and do everything that you generally do. But you can also use AI with it to manage your tasks. For example, you can ask it to generate tasks for you by brainstorming or planning projects, as well as performing duplicate detection to keep you focused. You can even assign whole tasks to Dart and it can get them done for you. You can use their composer-like AI agent that has the context of all your tasks and you can chat in natural language to just ask it to do something. It can delete tasks, create tasks, edit tasks, and handle multiple things like that. Apart from this, you can integrate it into your AI clients or coders with its MCP server, which allows your MCP client or coder to reference tasks from your dartboards. You can even integrate it into Claude, ChatGPT, and much more. Most of the features in Dart are free, while you can also get the $8 subscription for more features. Make sure that you check Dart out through the link in the description. Now, back to the video. First of all, go ahead and make sure that you upgrade it to the latest version. Now, head on over to RuCode, and then in the settings, make a new profile, and then choose Olama or OpenAI compatible option, 
and then just enter the details and choose the model accordingly as well over here. Now, we can start using it. Before using it, I recommend you to do something like this. First of all, having MCPs with this model can be really good, because like it can search and everything. And the Quen 3 models are quite good at tool calling as well. So, we can have some MCP servers, especially for allowing it to search the stuff and everything. So, one of the MCP servers that I use religiously with it is Firecrawl and Fetch MCP server. Fetch is simple. It just takes in a URL and fetches it, but it is not as reliable and doesn't provide the best markdown output. So, when possible, and I have internet connection, I rely on Firecrawl. I use Firecrawl because it is super easy to use and doesn't bog down your system. Plus, it has a ton of features that just make it super good. Like, it can gather clean data from all accessible subpages, even without a sitemap. It can parse and output content from web-hosted PDFs and more. It also intelligently waits for content to load, making scraping faster and more reliable. Plus, it can click, scroll, write, wait, press, and more before extracting content. It can also supply the screenshot of websites to the LLM for even better site replication and stuff like that. It has an MCP server that I will be using in this case, and it has a free plan with 500 credits. It also has a $16 and other higher tier plans if you do need them. For now, the free plan should be totally amazing. Anyway, to set it up, just get signed up there and then copy the Firecrawl API key. Then head on over to the MCP server settings of RuCode or KiloCode or Klein, and then just copy the MCP server settings, paste it there, and also paste in your API key, and it should now work. Now, let's try to use it as well. I'm going to ask it to make me a simple landing page for a next.js developer. And what you'll see is that it can go ahead and do some searches if it needs to here. Or it can also just go ahead and get the first stuff made here. And now it's done. It wrote the stuff in HTML, but if we look at it, then it looks amazing. This can't be generated with like one such small model, but here it is because it is really good. Now, we can also use it to make UI in something like React. So, I'm going to ask it to go ahead and make me a React script that is for a contact form with blue and red colors. Now, once we send it, you can see that it goes ahead and starts to create the stuff for us in literal seconds, and then in a bit, it gets done. And if I run this, then this also works and is quite good. You can use this easily to build some small components and then put them manually in because it can't handle the big context. I am not using the reasoning variant here because it just gets a bit too tedious and takes a lot of time to generate, but that will generally fetch you better results if you don't mind waiting. So, that should also be awesome. That is majorly how I have been using it. You can combine this with the Devstral model and have a real good time even coding locally on like a laptop, which should be kind of cool for sure. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.